Hello there, and welcome to the November 2024 John Wolf shareholder meeting. I'm president and CEO of John Wolf Enterprises, John Wolf, and this meeting is coming at a bit of an awkward time considering the days of inactivity leading up to it. It's been five days since the last upload. All the broken promises, all the false narratives of a horror game every day during horror game month. What happened? Well, we're here to take a look at that, to do a little uh, recap of the last month. If you've never been to a shareholder meeting before, that's what we do. Uh, once a month, I go through all of the videos of the past month on John Wolf, and I look forward to what's going to be posted in the next month. Or, in a lot of cases, what's planned to be posted, because plans change. <laughs> so, uh, let's get into it in just a moment but actually probably before i do that i should mention a couple things we've got two items to address one of which is a special announcement now many of you have probably seen this coming but we received official uh, merchandise in the mail an official award from youtube it's the silver play button to john twolf for passing a hundred thousand subscribers here it is it even says john twolf on it Oh my god. Okay, so it's j j okay, it's making it look like I got Coke cans all over my desk. It, see, look, blank space there, blank space there. It's just, it's literally just happens to be zoomed in on the cans. Anyway, I don't have Coke cans all over my desk. Silver play button, we got it. It's gonna go up on the wall with the one from John Wolf. Uh, it's gonna go. Not right beside it, but further down the line. So thank you everybody for subscribing. I know a lot of you are not subscribed because you think this is my main channel, John Wolf, and your mouth is like hanging open right now and you're like, I can't believe it. But uh, yeah, this is a second channel. So I'm glad to deliver the news to you. The second item that I need to address before we get started is Red Dead Redemption 2. The Red Dead Redemption 2 fans um, we're out in full force this past month wondering where the next video was. A um, lot of Red Dead Redemption 2 fans very passionate about the series but did not attend the last shareholder meeting and ironically did not uh, watch part 12 all the way through because at the end of part 12 and in the last shareholder meeting I said that we were going to be taking a break from Red Dead Redemption 2. Am I being passive aggressive right now? A little bit but I'm also just recapping what happened. Um, yeah, I decided to take a little bit of a break from Red Dead Redemption 2 so that I could go through uh, Horror Game Month for October. I did mention that there was a possibility and, and plans that I would come back to Red Dead Redemption 2 about midway through the month and do a couple episodes, but that just never happened because, as I said in the mini shareholder meeting, a lot of stuff came up in October that I wasn't expecting. We did a charity stream where we raised over $30,000 for Hurricane Helene relief. I cosplayed as Albert Wesker. Uh, that was really fun. I also ended up hosting the Dread XP Indie Horror Showcase, which I wasn't aware uh, that that was happening until you know just a couple weeks before it happened. But that was really fun. You can watch the VOD, by the way, of the Indie Horror Showcase on Dread XP's YouTube channel or on IGN. Apparently IGN streamed it. I did not know that. Watching the chat on IGN was really fun uh, because... <laughs> They were just like, get bro off the screen. <laughs> we want some, we want to see the games. Um, which is funny because I actually said that at one point. But yeah, it was funny. The IGN chat was just like, yeah, who is this guy? <laughs> anyway, it was, it, was, it was good though. It was fun. Um, but yeah, I ended up being really busy. Um, uploaded a Goosebumps video on the main channel. And I just didn't end up doing everything that I wanted to do on... Uh, the second channel this month, which, you know, we're going to be going over that in just a moment. So yeah, Red Dead, Redem Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to be returning very soon, uh, very, very, very soon, in the next couple days. So no worries there. Let's get into the uploads of the past month. So let's start with Zucosis, one of the most mediocre horror games I've played this year. Um, and also the one with possibly the most annoying comment section. Um, Zucosis, if you're not aware, is a game in which you take care of mutated animals. It's like Zoo Tycoon meets Outlast. A little more on the Outlast side because it's a little less about taking care of the animals and a little more about um, getting killed by a psychopath. So it's, it's definitely a game 
That is not what I think anybody expected. Some people still liked it. I did not. I did not complete it. I kind of just stopped playing uh, part three. Actually, I mean, it's debatable whether or not I completed it because I did hit a couple endings, but they were just variations of like the same crappy bad ending because the game is like 27 different endings and you're intended to play it over and over and over and over again to get the good ending. However, um, there's a lot of issues with the game, you know, glitches, bugs, uh, balance issues, uh, game mechanics that aren't very rewarding or some that are ultimately kind of meaningless. It's just uh, kind of a mess of a game. And so I felt comfortable doing a couple episodes and then stopping. And I don't plan on going back to it. And it's interesting because a lot of times these incredibly mediocre games have like the most hostile comment section, like the most passionate fans that have watched seven playthroughs of it but haven't played it themselves. They'll come out of the woodwork and be like, you're supposed to, you're supposed to concoct a, 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 a drug to, to cure the mutants. You know, they'll just try to relentlessly backseat you on a game that you're like, no one's going to remember this game like a year from now. You know, not to be cruel, but it's just always fascinating to me that it's it's the mediocre games that get the most uh, ruthless backseaters. But uh, again, it doesn't really matter because there will never be a part four, and this will just be lost to the sands of time, this playthrough. Um, it's not like anybody's going to come back to it for a comfort watch, so... Um, it just was interesting to go through it and be like, ah, oh, this is kind of, it's kind of what it was like on the main channel with some of these games. I did enjoy the, I did enjoy some of the comments that I got that were like, I'm questioning John's intelligence right now. Or like, John just can't handle complicated games like this. And I'm, I just throw my head back and laugh a little bit. Cause I'm like, I beat welcome to the game one and two, like you cannot tell me that Zucosis was too much for me, okay? Zucosis was just kind of a mess of a game, and I didn't want to play it anymore. It's not that it was too difficult. In fact, if you know what to do, the game's not difficult at all. It's just figuring out what to do, and it wasn't an interesting or rewarding process. It was just kind of frustrating. But anyway, we'll move on from Zucosis now and talk about Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit. This was a two-parter. I just wanted to check it out because I really liked the art style in the trailer, and I hadn't played uh, Five Nights at Freddy's game in a while. Unfortunately, I didn't really like this game that much. It was clearly aimed at an age group far below my current age, which we won't get into. I did turn 36 this month. I said I wouldn't get into it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a game for, I don't know, young adults at oldest, uh, teens and, and maybe older children so it was uh interesting to play through but it was very much like mr hop's playhouse and uh it was kind of long for the experience that it offered so yeah we didn't start off the month particularly well although i have to say i think i killed it with the thumbnails i think the thumbnails are sick um, i really like making thumbnails on this channel they don't take that long but you can kind of you can kind of curate them Quite a bit. I always make like a custom image for it, you know. Like the, for example, in this uh, FNAF into the pit thing, the ball pit doesn't extend this far. I, I manually did that, <laughs> so to speak, with Photoshop. But uh, you know, just make little changes like that. It's fun to do. Like this Zucosis font. This Zucosis font. The numbers doesn't exist. I, I, I put those together in Photoshop. I, I, I drew them out. So. Um, that's not an actual font that's being used. Anyway, just some little little shareholder tidbits. Um, you know, hand-drawn font, uh, uh, extended backgrounds, things like that. It's fun to do. Next, uh, played Mouthwashing, and this was not in the plans. This was one of those games that I mentioned where it's like, there might be a game that pops up that I didn't plan for that I'll end up playing just off the cuff. And this was one of them. Mouthwashing is great. If you haven't watched it, it's, like I said in the title, psychological horror done right. It's, um, in fact, we'll, can we, yeah, let's do this so you can see it a little bit better. Um, it's a great game. Very heavy subject material, uh, as it turns out. It starts off kind of like quirky and weird, and then it just goes off the deep end. It's really, really good, though. It's like a horror game of the year contender. Uh, no exaggeration. 
And then I played, and this is what took up the majority of the airtime this month, Silent Hill 2 Remake, which I was expecting to be like two or three parts and ended up being seven because the game is twice as long as the original. So, um, yeah, Silent Hill 2 is... Uh, it, it was a beast, and it went on longer than expected, and it kind of threw off my plans for the month. So, uh, But it was an amazing experience. I loved it. The playthrough did really well. Um, yeah. I mean, Silent Hill 2, what is there to say about it except it was good, um, if a bit long, and uh, the playthrough was really, really well received. Um, people were very happy about this one. Uh, which is a little bit different from the unenthused reaction of Into the Pit and the uh, mixed reviews of Zucosis. The uh, Silent Hill 2 was like everybody was into it. So that was it was really fun to upload these videos and play through the game. Nothing better than playing through a good game that you're into and everyone else is into, not only the game, but the way that you're playing it and the way that you're delivering it. That's just like what it's all about. So Silent Hill 2, probably my favorite uh, series of the month and uh, I'm not gonna say the year because Baldur's Gate 3 was a trip but yeah really nice did a sponsored video for Void Souls and um, it's like a minimalist Souls like game it was actually really fun I'm not gonna play any game uh, sponsored or otherwise on the channel that uh, I don't want to play or I'm not interested in at least baseline and uh, Void Souls was cool I'm excited to play the full game, which I think comes out in a few days, so just keep that on your radar. Then we did A Quiet Place, The Road Ahead, and oh my god, you know, th this was, I it just a, it's a game that made me angrier and angrier as it went along. I liked it well enough in the first part, in the, at the end of the first video, I was like, there's some cool mechanics here, I'm liking this. Part two, I was like, hmm, the mechanics are kind of frustrating and the story's not going anywhere. And then by the time we got to the end of part three, I was just like, can this be over? And then I had to play the game for four more hours. So um, the reaction to this was generally, people were optimistic a little bit at first, although I did notice a lot of people were making fun of it in part one, even then. I think people were down on it a little more than I was at that point. Um, tends to be the case, frankly. You know, some people say that I'm too negative, but I always look in the comments and I'm like, you guys are ruthless. You guys are way more, you know, uh, mean about this stuff than I am. But uh, yeah, so by the time we got to part four, it was just everybody was like, I can't stand watching this game. This is torture. <laughs> but they but they were complimenting my delivery of it and and everything. So I'm I'm happy about that. It was also a unique playthrough in that I didn't commentate long stretches of it because the game used microphone activity, so I decided to turn it on. Um, so yeah, for all the people that like to throw me on the background, set it and forget it, sorry that you couldn't do that with this playthrough because it wasn't really delivering anything on the audio side. That's not why I, I, I used the microphone, but it was just a fun little side effect. Uh, we did episode 54 of Spine Chill, finally finished our console tier list. This is my... Uh, uh, horror game podcast started out as a DVD podcast and then kind of went to like asymmetrical horror and then now it's just general horror games uh, we got another episode on the way uh, at this point we're kind of doing them once a month or so but yeah episode 55 should actually be uploaded very soon it's a special Halloween episode that I didn't get uploaded in time for Halloween oops so we'll be in costume for it that's gonna be fun uh, Sketchy's Contract came back for a part 7, and soon a part 8, by the way. There's a Halloween update to the game. If you're not familiar with Sketchy's Contract, it's like a Lethal Company-style game. Uh, you go out and get loot. Um, there's monsters. It's like a, kind of a roguelike sort of uh, party game experience. Co-op... Uh, Co-op action, but yeah, it's uh, we really like Sketchy's contract. I played with Sino, Gary, and Gab, Team Easy Small, and uh, yeah, we've got, like I said, a part eight on the way. I think Gab's already uploaded on her channel, and then for book club for Spine Chill, I played Mirror Layers, uh, a 2021 meta horror game that I played the original versions of it. Um, 
the wrong game, Joel, like 2016 or so. I played those on the main channel, and then I played the updated Steam version in this one for about, I played about half of it. So it's an incomplete playthrough. But uh, some people want me to return to it for a part two. I don't know if I'm going to do that just because I've got so many other things that I need to get to. And that video was uploaded five days ago, and then I didn't upload anything else. Not even for Halloween. No. So, yeah, let's talk about the month ahead and everything that I am going to try to get going for this. Um, yeah, so of the things that we didn't do this past month that I said I was going to and that I still want to do, um, did not play... Silvio 3, going to play that. Did not play Dead Signal, the new Reflex Studios game. Uh, did not play um, Fears to Fathom, episodes 4 and 5. Uh, those will be coming up. And I did not play the uh, PS2 horror game that I teased because I just ran out of time. That was actually going to be uploaded on Halloween, but things just kind of didn't work out that way. So I'm still planning on doing all of those things. It's just... Cramming everything in before Halloween gets tough when you're uploading three-hour videos every day, uh, like I was for a while there, two and a half, three and a half hour videos, and you're still trying to work on main channel stuff and, you know, hosting a showcase, doing charity streams, that type of thing. So it just kind of ended up not coming through how I wanted, uh, but I am still planning on doing a lot of those things and, and fitting them in this month. In, in the background of uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, which will be restarting. Uh, one major game release uh, that I am planning on checking out, it comes out in a week, November 8th. It is Slitterhead, and this is uh, kind of a very highly anticipated Japanese horror game that uh, we're going to be checking out. Uh, look it up if you're not familiar. There's trailers. going to be starting that on November 8th. Oh, I also did not play the Until Dawn remake. Now, I was originally going to play this when it came out, and then I it turned out that it was coming out while I was out of town uh, visiting family, and uh, so I missed the release date for Until Dawn. And then when I came back, everybody was like, it's a downgrade from the original uh in a lot of ways and there's not even that much that's different from it and so I'm like am I just gonna be playing Until Dawn again because like Until Dawn is a game that I enjoy but I have played it I think three times now and uh, I don't know if I just want to play it like again um, especially like an inferior version like I've been hearing or at least at least the reviews are mixed right so I've kind of held off on Until Dawn it's kind of a game that I think I'll maybe wait uh, until, until I don't have more pressing games to play, frankly. Um, speaking of which, Amanda the Adventurer 2 came out. Some people asked about that. I haven't even played the first one, so that's something I'll have to play catch up on. I've also got Gabriel Knight's uh, Beast Within on the back burner right now. So I've got a lot of stuff that I can upload this month, and I'm planning on playing catch up this month and going through a lot of that. It's just... Like I said, Silent Hill 2 was longer than I thought. Um, Quiet Place ended up really draining me and ended up being like a 10-hour game. Oh, my God. So lots of games that were longer than I expected and lots of other things that popped up this month. But in the month of November, I'll be catching up and we'll try to get through all the stuff I said I would do in October. And uh, like I said, Red Dead Redemption 2, very soon, part 13. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, please uh, make sure you sign the sign-in sheet on your way out. And until next time, think critically.